Naruto, Sasuke, All Might, Michael Jordan. What do these people have in common? They're second to none. Just as the X-Men episode I just watched. It's one of the best superhero episodes that I've watched in a long time. And I promise you, I'm not even lying. It's a 10 out of 10, I promise. What did Drake say? Tensions is definitely rising. The tensions were definitely rising. And it was at like through the roof towards the climax of the show and the episode. And uh, I actually felt for the characters. So I felt bad about what happened towards the end of the episode, which I don't really feel that much for a lot of like Marvel shows or, or Marvel projects as of late or shows in general so that was a really good thing that he did the writer's room and uh can i just say the writing was just like perfect like near perfect from start to end like they had to have had like some breaking bad invincible like game of thrones season one to four level of writing in there in that room because that was like mad productive so yeah i had a lot of questions basically the episode starts off with magneto rogue and gambit going to genosha which has officially been um included in the list of UN nations. And over there, we see some familiar faces and stuff like that. We see Nightcrawler, uh, Leech, and um, yeah, that's, that's about it. That's all I remember. And the sports people of Genosha want Magneto to be the leader of Genosha, along with Rogue, um, because the person in the government doesn't really trust Magneto as of yet. And to basically prove to her that Magneto's changed, on one condition, Magneto would rule with Rogue and X-Men. And then we also get some backstory about Rogue and uh, the whole dynamic with Magneto and why she's been acting kind of strange. So it turns out when she was first learning how to use her powers uh, under her mother mystique mystique took her to Magneto, who to train her and teach her about her powers and it turns out that his powers render her powers ineffective so they could you know you know what and uh that's basically how it all got started until she left to find uh the x-men and then that's all been history since then so yeah that explains the history between the two of them and the dynamic between all three of them gambit magneto and rogue um even though she still cares for gambit but that is something that happened in the past and she tells Gambit this, and of course, he's kind of like, I think, sad and angry. And he's like, okay, cool, I got you. But uh, we'll be friends until then, so never mind. And she, not per se, like, not for cheating, but, like, it kind of makes sense because her whole, her powers does not allow anyone to, like, you know, really become close, I guess. And Magneto is the only person that could do this in the past. So you can see why she's kind of vulnerable to that. And then later on, they all go to this ballroom dance so yeah on the other side of all this the x-men are being interviewed by this news agency to make the world see them as more human and cyclops is still kind of angry about having to give his child away to the future and not being able to take care of his child and the whole duplicate of uh, genes and stuff like that and he kind of snaps at the a news reporter asking the question and he's like you guys are different we're not the same and you're lucky we're different because there are good mutants out there that actually help you guys that are ungrateful, hateful, and a bunch of other things, I guess. So the real Jean and Madeline Pryor from like episode three or two, it turns out Madeline Pryor is in Genosha and they're both having telepathic connections throughout, uh, throughout the episode and like these strange attacks randomly. And it turns out that they have basically at some point they have a nosebleed simultaneously and Cable shows up from the future and Madeline recognizes him as her son. And they share like a little bit of a moment together. And then after he's trying to say like, yo, get everybody out of there, stop the music. And he doesn't have enough time to actually do anything. And then he teleports away. And Madeline is like, what do you mean? Stop what? And then a bunch of bombs go up in Genosha. And they were created by these sentinels, one three headed sentinel. And basically Magneto, I think he's alive, but it seems like he's dead. While he was trying to protect Rogue, Gambit, and some other mutants uh, while fighting the Sentinel. And it's very sad how he went out because it seemed like it was just the start of his redemption arc. And I would have really loved to see that. So I really hope he's alive. And um, yeah, so Rogue gets upset and then she chases after the Sentinel. And Gambit is right there. And then he stops her from chasing after the Sentinel because he doesn't want Rogue to die. So Gambit instead goes up to the Sentinel, tries to blow it up. And then he gets stabbed in the stomach. And I thought Gambit was dead here. And I, I was like very sad. And then he uses the opportunity to like, you know, because whatever he touches, he can explode. So the open wound in his stomach allowed him to ignite the robot and blow it up. But uh, he also ended up dying and then Rogue ended up crying. And that's basically where the episode ends. But um, yeah, the tensions were through the roof. And I was on like the edge of my seat the whole time because I was wondering like, what's going to happen? And there was something sinister about it. No pun intended about the whole thing because why did Jean and Madeline have this like telepathic attacks randomly 
and what was about to go down in this episode. And yeah, everything else was just great. The voice acting from Rhodes, especially um, the animation and the plot in general. I really hope they can keep up this level of writing until at the end of the season, at least, because then it'll be like a nine out of 10 show, in my opinion. But yeah, that's about it. Leave a comment down below what you thought. Um, I really enjoyed it and I recommend you watch it. Peace.